Good morning, friends, and welcome to the tea. You may think that I forgot to dress myself for today's episode, but the truth is I have dressed up more than you could imagine because today's tea is called Big Red Robe. How fun is that? So I decided to wear my big red robe. Thank you to my dear student, Annalise, a former, former student of mine who was in the musical I directed, and she gave me this robe because she's a rock star. Um, because teachers need to get cozy, so I am so nice and comfy, and I don't know why I don't wear this every day, but today it's a great day to wear it because this tea is literally called Big Red Robe. Um, underneath are some um, words that I'll probably mispronounce again. These are, it says Wu Yi Oolong Tea from the Li family in Wu Yishan, Fujian, China. This tea was harvested in spring of 2019, and much like the last, um, tea from China, from verdant teas that I tried. It's got some information that I don't understand on the back about um, 10 seconds, which, what, what does 10 seconds mean? 10 seconds of what? It can't, like, it's got to steep for longer than that. And that one, then it says, steep many times and adjust to taste. Well, let's find out. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to make ourselves some big red robe tea in my big red robe, and then I'm gonna share some positivity. Um, this is not the positivity today, but it's pretty positive. I gotta show you this cool way that I'm gonna make my tea today. So my pal Grace, who is my neighbor and friend down the street, gave me a present um, several years ago, and it is called the Manatee. And as you can hopefully see, it is a manatee-shaped tea infuser, and it gets better. Okay, so you open up your loose tea, and you pour it into the manatees, but try not to spill it like I'm about to. Oh, I'm definitely making a huge mess. Ignore this mess. Oh, oh. I'm making a mess. I'm really good at that. Okay, and then you um, you put the manatee's head onto his butt, like so. He's now full of tea. He looks really stuffed and happy. And then you take your snazzy mug. This is like a mug that looks like it probably cost $30 at a craft show, but guess what? It cost me 50 cents at the yard sale. It's the way Whitman rolls. So you take your manatee and you just get him, put his arms in front and look at, look at how cute is that? He's relaxing on my teacup as he waits to be filled with hot water and have his butt burnt to a crisp. So we're going to make our red robe tea in a minute as soon as my water boils, um, and then we'll give it a tasting, and then we will talk about some positivity for today. Alrighty, friends, we're back. I've burnt my manatee's butt. He looks pretty content. Uh, let's try this, this red, big red robe tea. Mmm, so it smells really nice. It's an oolong tea, but it smells like a green tea. What the heck is oolong tea? I've drank it before, but I don't really know. Let's look it up. What is oolong tea? Yeah. Google, tell us things. I'm not going to say, hey, Google, because I don't want my thing, my Google Home, to hear me. It's listening to everything. All right, so Google. Oh, it just left. Okay, so let's find out here. What is oolong tea? So oolong tea is a traditional Chinese tea. It is made from the leaves of the Camellia sinensis plant, the same plant used to make green tea and black tea. The difference is in how the tea is processed. Well, that's fascinating because I find that if I don't have black tea around, my go-to backup is oolong, and they're the same leaves. So that's interesting. Makes me sad here. So does that mean that oolong tea is a variety of green tea? No, it is neither a black tea nor a green tea. It falls into its own category of tea. This could be a serious rabbit hole if I continue reading about tea. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to taste this stuff. So we've got our big red robe. It smells really nice. It almost smells like nutty in a way. I don't know why, but it's got like a nuttiness to it, like a, a depth. Um, let's give it a taste. It's very reminiscent to me of green tea. It feels like something I would drink at a, a nice, um, like maybe a Japanese restaurant. I used to work at a Japanese restaurant, which is why that immediately comes to mind. Um, although I get fired and they made me wear a kimono that I looked ridiculous in, like a, like a sausage encasing. It was horrible. Um, long story. We'll tell it another day. Um, but yeah, this is, this is really kind of nice. It's not English breakfast. I definitely will drink English breakfast afterwards, but it's nice. It's uh, 
soothing. I feel like it probably needs to steep for a long time before it really gets the full depth of flavor. But I don't know, I know some teas, if you steep them for too long, they get kind of like bitter and gross. So we'll test that out and find out. So today, because um, I'm just feeling generous, I've got two bits of positivity for you. And the first is really simple but wonderful. So my students will tell you that um, I am pretty bad at remembering to hydrate. I just don't drink enough water. Um, it's probably part of the reason I'm so good at going through the whole school day without peeing sometimes, TMI, sorry. But so I, um, I usually rely on my students to remind me to drink water and they're not here and I miss them. And so as a result, I've had to remind myself to drink water. I have had a few students email me and remind me, thank you, Owen, um, because I do need to be reminded. But so I'm trying to get better. And so I recently made a really stupid discovery that is gonna be today's positivity. So here I have a glass of water, which is wonderful and refreshing and I don't take it for granted. However, sometimes drinking a giant glass of water multiple times a day can feel a little bit repetitive um, a little bit unexciting, if you will. And so I recently had a lime on hand and I thought to myself, hey, let's just see what happens. I'm gonna squeeze some lime in here. So I got this half a lime, it's looking kind of ancient, which I love. So I'm gonna just squeeze it right on here. And I can actually see a little like, oh, I just put some on my computer. Um, oopsie. And so I am like squeezing a little bit of lime in there and oh my gosh, it just, I did this last night and I was like, oh my goodness, world flipped upside down, Hamilton. Um, it just, whoa, it, it just altered the experience of drinking the water in such a lovely way. And so today's bit of positivity numero uno is add some citrus to your water. It's dumb, but it's awesome. Now, the second bit of positivity is something that has come out of quarantine that I love and plan on continuing to endorse post quarantine because sometimes there are things that happen in quarantine sometimes like I'm just learning this now because I've not been quarantined before but some things that are emerging in this time period are really cool and one of them is the porch drop off because we have to keep our six feet of separation so we drop things off on each other's porches and run away or at least we I do so recently my students a couple of them won a prize so I dropped off a rainbow colored slinky and a rainbow colored pen on their porches and then ran away and it was awesome. And I've had some lovely people doing the same thing for me. So for example, my sister-in-law Libby, who is awesome, and is the mother to the cutest nephew ever, Lewis, uh, Libby left some fresh kale from her neighbor's garden on my porch so that now I can cook with fresh kale, which is amazing. Also, one of my students, Ruby, I think it was actually Ruby's super awesome mom, dropped off a tin of Paris tea on my doorstep, which was so stinking cool. And then I got a text or a message, a remind message that just said, go check your porch. And I found this, plus an adorable note from Ruby. Oh, love it. Then yesterday, no, a couple days ago. Well, yesterday I get in my little mailbox, I found this teeny little bit of jam, which is so cute. And it's made from foraged berries. And it was from my student Winter and his family. And they left me this little bit of jam so I can put it on my bread, which is so cool. And then, and then it keeps going. My student Holly recognized that my name being Whitman and my you know feelings about chocolate drops off this beautiful heart-shaped box of Whitman's chocolates. Look, that's my name. I wish I could take credit for being part of Whitman's chocolates dynasty, but I'm not. But not only did she give me this, even better, she gave me a heart-shaped pile of affirmations to go with it, which is seriously the coolest. There's even an acrostic poem featuring my name. So that was my sweet Holly. My gosh, porch drop-offs are amazing. So yesterday I dropped off some books at a friend's house and I just left a little note that said, happy reading, enjoy these books, I think you'll like them. You could drop off so many cool things on people's porches. Just make sure you tell them so the squirrels don't get to it first. But oh my gosh, I feel like there is nothing more exciting than opening my door, thinking that I'm going to walk onto a boring patio and then there's stuff, but like cool stuff, stuff that I like, left on my porch by cool people who I also like. So let me tell you something, guys. There's a lot of positivity. There's a lot of negativity in the world right now, but there's a lot of positivity. Gosh, are we very, very lucky and blessed to have so much joy. So thank you to everybody who dropped stuff off on my porch. Um, this is not a, a call for people to do that, but um, I won't stop you. And I will absolutely drop things off on people's porches in the weeks to come. Um, I think it is such a cool thing that we are spreading a little bit of joy in the ways that we can in this crazy time. So y'all, that is the tea for today. You're very beautiful. And I thank you for tuning in. 
and sharing in my experience of oolong tea and hydration and porch drop-off. May your day be splendid and full of joy. See you soon.